Okay, I think that if it's good with you all, I'm going to just get started here. Um, well, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here with us this evening for expanding the web, this reading and conversation. Um, my name is Emmett. I'm the bookstore manager at Printed Matters St. Mark's, which is Printed Matters East Village store. Um, keep it really brief, but just say a few things. Um, we're here to celebrate uh, We Web Keepers, uh, which is a publication by Lucasa Bramfman Verissimo that um, Printed Matter published back in the fall. Uh, and it has been so special and really an honor to work with Lucasa on this project, um, which also took the form of a window installation um, that was at the store also in the fall. Um, and I just wanted to say that the conversations we had about this publication to me really felt like an act of translation. We were translating their window installation into book form and really letting the medium play with the content as well as change it in these ways um, that was exciting to me. I think that artist books are sort of always an act of translation um, just in that the conceptualization is such an important part of it and the ways that we put those things into pages is always just such a choice. And it was really, really cool um, working with Lucasa as they made those choices and um, doing that together. Um, so thank you to Lucasa uh, for working with me on this, for working with the store. Thank you, Ayana, for your beautiful essay that is in We Web Keepers. Um, yeah, the whole thing has just been really a wonderful experience for Printed Matter. And uh, Lucas and I have been talking about putting together some programming um, around We Web Keepers for a while now. And we are very excited to welcome uh, Ayana Zaire Cotton and Kamra Sadia Hakim uh, to be in conversation today about this project. Um, I'm so excited to hear what you all have to say. Um, and yeah, again, just thank you everyone for being here. I'm gonna turn it over to Lucasa. Thank you, Emmett. I am going to screen share and start this all off. We Web Keepers is connective tissue, baskets, nets, hands that hold bodies that fight oppression, underground mycelium, seeds getting ready to sprout, ancestors we never got to meet, kinship so deep it reminds us of our multiplicity chosen family, lovers, an ecosystem, a legacy of caring that holds us through the darkest days. I am just thought I would start with this um, kind of quote that I included in the publication that feels like, yeah, is the connective tissue of this work and a holder of tonight. Um, I am Lucasa Bramfman Verissimo, and I am so honored to be here in this becoming space that we are creating together, this web, this network, this gathering. I'm imagining that we're all sharing a meal right now. I know Camera mentioned eating some croissants that are baking in the kitchen. So I'm imagining us all sharing those croissants together. Um, but until we get to do that, may this night be our food and our nourishment. Um, it's so nourishing for me to think of all the ways that the three of us get to continue expanding this web together, post the release of the publication and the site-specific installation calling in all fellow spiders and activators and crafters of care together. Um, so yeah, just wanna thank you Ayana and Camera, for being here tonight and supporting this work, my practice and all, all the layers and variations um, and super incredible thanks to Emmett for being a really incredible kind of comrade editor word processor with me. Um, and to Eva, Pada, Hannah, Marshall, 
and Max Seiler for their work in crafting the incredible graphic design of the publication and holding the show. Um, we Web Keepers is our roots and our seeds for this evening, our expansion point. When I was invited to do a site-specific installation at Printed Matters St. Mark's Store in the fall of 2022, I was thinking a lot about poetic, theoretical, and functional roles, forms, and tools of connectivity, such as webs or nets, roots, bulletin boards, chosen family, queer kinship, newspapers, mutual aid text threads, footnotes, whispering, occupations, broadcasts, the sharing of news. So before we jump into conversing together, I thought I would just locate us in um, kind of orienting us to the many layers of this work, what has come before tonight. Um, so I'm just going to slide through a few install images of We Web Keepers, which was installed in two windows on St. Mark's and 2nd Avenue at the Printed, Mar at the Printed Matter St. Mark's store. I was thinking about these windows acting like bulletin boards for the sharing of a larger story, the sequencing installed at random, one page of text and one page of patterns taped to the window like a bulletin board every day that the show was up. The publication untangles and tangles that story, always asking how our forms of connectivity, storytelling, act as resistance and fighting for Black and trans and disabled liberation, how that those fights glitch, catch, and center. And as Camera's most recent book says, Care technologies are the embodied entanglement of human relations, which I love that in relation to this constant glitching and tangling as these forms that we must practice as we practice this um, kind of like forms of, of connection or forms of practices of relating. Um, so this is a really incredible infographic illustration that Ayana taught me about that is included in their um, introduction uh, to We Web Keepers. And I thought we would use it as an invitation to call in all of y'all into this space. Um, I love thinking of the web starting with this bridge thread that connects two and then the three. So how do we, as the three of us, kind of become these anchor points to this larger conversation? So like the spider we just saw starting to craft its web, um, we are the anchor points and I am so honored to invite fellow web keepers, web crafters, web workers. Um, Ayana Zaire Cotton, who has graced us with the foreword for We Web Keepers, and special guest camera Sadia Hakim, who I continue to be in awe of in all their projects and works and formations of care and futurity making. So now that we have our anchor points, um, we can start crafting our radius, our web, our work that we are collectively making today. I'm going to start by reading the story that was added to the window bulletin board and is untangled in the form of the publication that we're celebrating tonight. I've never read it aloud. It's been mostly a thing that has been read by others, but um, Emmett encouraged me to read it in this context. And um, I think after you hear me read my section, Ayana is going to read their foreword. So I love the idea of this kind of like read aloud also as this continued um, creation of new work. 
We born to carry. We carry, we web networks. Adjusting tension to keep all close. We networkers, webbed makers. Web keepers, we web keepers of threads that form blankets and banners and cloth and home. We web, we hold, we lean and let in. Lean and on shoulders and arms and grow feeders, eaters, lovers, lovers, adjusters. Rewriters, viewers, imaginers. Tangle we hold, we basket, we net carrying us. We web keepers of the web. We web to stay free, to get free. We have different roles, weavers, guides, storytellers, disruptors, caregivers, visionaries, experimenters, healers. We web to stay close. We quilt, we patch, we celebrate, we are poets. We can forget together, we can choose words. Web keepers, crafters of clouds and seeds and fists, listening to the fire, engulfing it all. We web to survive. You hold our web, unite a spider in my hand to web and weave. We holders and containers of stories, legacies, and we webbers our recipient gatherers, our home being a bag, porch, people, the sea, bread, touch, conflict, yes. And so now I want to hand it off to Ayana um, to share this most incredible response, continuation, conversation of the work. I am so floored. Camera and I were texting earlier about this forward. No. I, mean, uh, <laughs> I know you didn't, we said to not make you cry, but um, <laughs> so honored to introduce uh, we web as rehearsal, every web needs a window. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all so much. Thank you for the invitation, Lucasa. Thank you, Emmett, for um, just like your love and labor and editing uh, the essay as well. Um, I feel super fortunate to not only be a part of this project, but be in this room right now with y'all. So I'm gonna read um, We Web as Rehearsal, Every Web Needs a Window, which was commissioned by Lucasa and Printed Matter. Um, and it actually starts with this epigraph by Sadia Hartman um, that you know, I was really, really thinking a lot about um, when I got this invitation from Lucasa. So I'm going to start with that and then go into the essay. <clears throat> the chorus bears all of it for us. The Greek etymology of the word chorus refers to dance within the enclosure. What better articulates the long history of struggle, the ceaseless practice of black radicalism and refusal, the tumult and upheaval of open rebellion than the acts of collaboration and improvisation that unfold within the space of enclosure. The chorus is the vehicle for another kind of story, not of the great man or the tragic hero, but one in which all modalities play a part. Where the headless group incites change, where mutual aid provides the resource for collective action, not leader and mass, where the untranslatable songs and seeming nonsense make good the promise of revolution. And again, that's by Sadia Hartman. Um, in, uh, in the book, Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments. Glitched rituals of the web. I call it the river. Sidia Hartman calls it the chorus. Lucasa Brentman, Verissimo calls it the web. This headless collective antibody 
with practices as strong as spider silk, leaving behind threads you can't see but can feel? How will we destabilize the colonial conception of human being while stabilizing the new stories we're spinning? The web is load bearing, load balancing, distributing network traffic across multiple servers, suspending the next world in, the, in mid air, keeping it sticky, waiting for others to get there. In search of our ceremony, we found our code webbed memory of how we could care for each other in the most metallic times as elemental as a server we found each other shimmering in a neural net of our own making. Greeting each other each morning with a self-portrait captured at arm's length, looking up, 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 reminding the line of time, we're still here. Mutual aid flyers are passed around like service guides on Sunday morning. Your profile grid becomes a quilt assembled with a patchwork of performance found fabrics of longing and scraps of slippery, slippery selfies to coax the algorithm into the dance. Consenting not to be a single being, the stickiness of our collective data troubles the boundary of a body. Using the web to organize a network of free, fit, of free fridges as anchor points on the corner for other threads to connect to. Using server farms to farm service. We web as rehearsal, opening up portals of performance, pulling whatever platforms the people are on into the dance, remembering every web needs an existing structure. Reclaiming the materials the machine spits out, we web in Tinder emails, in the solitude of a notes app, in the hallways of the DMs, wading through a cotton coated history, Navigating the warp and weft of the grid that is the fabric of our lives, refusing to fold. Tangled demands of the web. Anything beyond the tangled scale of intimacy is beyond bearable. What overlapping demands might we make from inside this colored lattice of longing? In extended notes on the riot, Hartman cites the web and recalls the work of Ella Baker and Angela Davis who affirm, yes, you have grasped the world at its roots so you know the struggle is eternal. Inside the deep time of this internal struggle, demands take the form of everyday intimacies. The loop of library checkout cards, the mesh, of hair salon waiting areas, the knots of grim grimoires hidden under floorboards, the net of community gardens, the web inside the pages of family photo albums archiving the evidence of the graduation cookout everyone showed up for. Because who else do you bear eternity with but each other? Our overlapping demands, the surface area of the bulletin board already holding your prayer requests. Or the expanse of the coffee table we sit across while freedom dreaming in midair, where our dialogue creates bridge threads between open mouths. Someone said eternity is only survivable through poetry. The chorus chimes in again when Hartman recalls Sharifa Rose Pitts takes it to the bridge. The shape depends on what it is designed to bear and who bears it. Care webs, the shape of what it is designed to bear and who bears it, informs the scope of our interpersonal demands. Braiding appointments are traded for childcare. Ancestral seeds are left in mailboxes in exchange for art books. And another anchor thread is fun when someone in the group chat asks, does anyone need anything while I'm out? Wrapping ourselves in the possibility that there is no new world, only the next one in this eternal struggle. We are spinning tangled demands, the shape of our present longing, a performance of invention and experimentation only feasible through the intersecting support of our webbing are needing, are asking. Performing the next world where the poetry of our being is an everyday demand in motion moving across the web made possible by the 90 degree angle 
of the branch and the tree trunk. The web anchors inside this open enclosure to provide the stage for an untranslatable story not yet named, a plot not yet determined, an ending not yet owned. We outline carpool schedules and encrypted messaging apps. We break zines like bread. We make music with the moans of our generative conflict. Decentralized, leaderless, and open, our everyday insistence is a demand, intimate and eternal, open wide. Holding stories of the web. Responsive web design is fluid, it's flexible and adaptable, responding to the space of the browser, the opening, the porthole of the portal. Webbing inside the window, the stories we need are the stories we have. Our collective memory and open source software initialized in our song, our collaboration, our care, our care web technology where tending to roots, weaving mesh, repairing nets, and tying knots are the primary programming protocols. Coded choreography practiced across generations, you might begin to notice we always leave an opening for you. We web keepers, opaque where necessary, transparent when necessary, only for your gaze. Come look inside through colors that sing, flyers that dance, woven need that exchanges hands. Lucasa reminds us the web is a stage and we web keepers reminds us every web needs a window. We'll be waiting for you, singing, dancing, holding, as you climb through. I call it the river. Sadia Hartman calls it the chorus. Lucasa Breathman Verissimo calls it the web. To stumble into the social spaciousness of Black feminist being is to remember the stories we need are the stories we have. Responsive web design doesn't require unlimited space. It requires parameters to dance inside of. Spider silk creating anchor points in mid air still needs a window to establish the initial bridge thread. Look for the opening. Look for the lattice of longing to attach anchor points to. Build a web within its frame and you might find yourself inside the irresistibility of the next world suspended in mid air, keeping it sticky, waiting for others to get there. Mm. Thank y'all for listening. Mm. What a gift to hear it out of your words. I feel like when I first got my hands on this publication, I read it aloud to myself, but it just feels, yeah, it feels like the words are, are alive through your mouth. So thank you so much for these words and for this beautiful read aloud. Yes. It was a juicy session. Thank you. <laughs> I know I was like reading along with my copy. <sighs> hmm. Um. Oh, do you want to jump in, camera, or shall we continue and let's then continue? Okay. <laughs> we can. Let's. Yeah. Many windows to climb through. All three of us. Yes. Always. <laughs> <laughs> dance through um so this is another guide that i'm offering to our conversation um an influence to the writing and the story that i wrote for the publication um the social change ecosystem map by deepa Iyer. um and i thought i would just give a little framework to how Ayer describes this tool for folks who aren't familiar with it. We're seeing it, lucky y'all, for the first time tonight. Um, so this tool as a framework that can help individuals, networks, and organizations align with social change values, individual roles, and the broader ecosystem. It has two components, shared values embodied in the yellow circle in the middle and 10 roles that people and organizations 
often show up in when they are participating in social change efforts. These are premise, premised on an ecosystem concept that we are more effective and more sustainable in our social change work when we build connections with others. Um, and so I wanted to just kind of use this as a jumping off point for our inv invitation. I'll stop the um, screen share um, and invite us all in uh, to unmute or, or jump in however. Um, but I was, you know, of course, all the roles I feel like the three of us occupy in some way or another. Um, but I was thinking a lot about how I feel camera so much is it within the caregiver role. Um, and I'm specifically thinking about your work in founding the activation residency and farm coming soon. Um, <laughs> writing your most recent book, Care Manual, Dreaming Care into Being. And I was wondering if you wouldn't mind starting us off by thinking about how this role of the caregiver influences your work. Thank you so much for that question and lead in and the opportunity to be here with y'all. I'm like over the moon that we get to have this public conversation. Um, so when I wrote care manual, I was thinking about care in how to compost my trauma and turn it into really rich, fertile soil for all of us to dance in. And now that I'm dancing, I feel like I'm thinking about care in this very particular moment of my life as how we get to know ourselves through each other. Mm -hmm. um, so an example of that, I, I'm a musician. Um, I'm working on my second record right now with some of the most brilliant musicians of my time. I love my collaborators. And a couple of weeks ago, um, so oftentimes I have to take the role of like the singer, songwriter, performer, and also the creative director since it's my project. And we had a session, it was going to be like four of us in a 10 by 10 room working on this song, just like throwing ideas at the wall. And before the session, I texted one of my collaborators and I was like, hey, um, so because we have so much work to cover, you know, right at seven o'clock, I want to like hit the ground running and get started. Like, I know we love to chat, but I just want to like get in there and get it done. And they responded and they were just like, thank you so much for that direction. I feel so held by your capacity to share what you need. Um, and they complimented me and said, like, you're an amazing communicator. And, and, and being able to know myself through the experience of sharing my needs was just like, and I'm also thinking about um, like knowing myself is the most caring thing I can do for myself and, and the people that I'm collaborating with and the people that I love. Um, so it feels like to take a step back and go from like, oh my gosh, I was this traumatized baby who needed to figure a way out. So I wrote a book about it and then I wrote a book about it and then I practiced the things in the book and now I'm in the practice and it feels so good. Um, so that would, yeah, that would be my first, my first thought on that. And then even just thinking about the beautiful poetry of Lucasa, how you're thinking about the web and and Ayana, how you're thinking about the river and how City is thinking about the chorus. Like I'm thinking about the grid and I actually want to reclaim the grid because I feel like it's gotten a bad rap because of white supremacy. But the grid for me is so beautiful because it's like at each point we get an opportunity to connect, but also transcend, but also expand. It's like we have that opportunity to touch each other while also maintaining some space. And I think being able to play with like, what does it mean to touch, but also give space at the same time is, is really, really profound. So thank you for that question. Thank you for that answer, for that continual, continual ways of how we are, how we must organize and be in relation to each other. I wonder, Ayana, I mean, like literally every time Cameron talks, I'm like pen and paper, pen and paper. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I got <laughs> for this event that I'm 
holding. Literally, it's just it's just going to be it's we're we're in a classroom right now is is what it feels like. And um, oh my gosh, camera! I think something that really really struck me was like this idea of um as, as of, of of caregiving also as um we can extend and deepen it and maybe the originating ethos was it of it was self-preservation in a way like it has to kind of start there because otherwise right if we're if we're if we're moving and creating and um collaborating from a place of um fear right right and um and you know whatever we want to call the opposite of love whether it's fear whether it's whatever if we're operating from that place we we actually aren't able to 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 care for anyone and we aren't able to communicate in ways that that makes that makes anyone feel good or, or definitely are, are ourselves and i think that's something that i kind of had to learn within the last 3 years was like oh you're not actually being kind by not being clear with this person like you're actually you're just protecting yourself and not actually in a helpful way <laughs> so um i i'm so happy you you kind of called that um to the to, to the forefront because i think there's been a legacy in my family of caregiving around just 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 giving and giving and giving and giving right so so much to the point where you know, I truly believe there's a lot of Black women in my family who may have died prematurely from this endless giving, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and now is, is, that the, is that the ending we actually needed? Is that, is that the life that we, um, that we actually want to, uh, to model moving forward? So thank you for raising that up front. And then the other part about the grid, just like, I feel like we, I, I want to hear you talk more and more and more <laughs> about that because um, for me, it brought up like the grid of the warp and the weft, right? When we're thinking yes, about weaving, exactly. it's literally a warp and a weft. It's a cloth that <laughs> keeps us warm. And there's all these functional analogies, right? When Lucasa opened up with the theoretical and the functional, there's all these like theoretical and functional analogies and the grid, but then also right? Um, coding began on the weaving loom. It began within the grid. This, this binary of ones and zeros is where coding came from. So I love that you're like taking back the grid and like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you're bringing us back in and saying, you know, we can actually think about this more expansively um, and not, not flatten it. Um, like, like white supremacy has done. Yes, that part. So, <laughs> so the first piece you talked about, um, I, I honestly wish we could edit the social change uh, roles and add caretaker to caregiver yes. because I yeah. feel like it so kinda, much in my mind it feels together, but now that I look at it, I'm like, it's not there. It yeah. should be there. Yeah, because yeah. yes. yeah. it's like so, I feel like so much of um, caregiving has been learning how to how to take care as yes. well, or, or or say what it is that you need. Um, so I love that piece. And then also too, just like the mirroring that happens when you're able to do that. It's like when I show my collaborators that I can put my needs first and I notice that they start doing it. Hello. And I'm like, hello. Hey, hey. <laughs> so good. It's so good. Um, <laughs> and I, I think the piece about the grid, it's so, it's a new idea. I just, it just like came into my brain today after reading your amazing essay that just is like, warping and wefting heaven like I was just like lord have mercy this is <laughs> the girlies were not ready for that but even too like with a grid you have the all of these like squares right that are all sort of looking in at each other through space and so there's a mirroring that happens there and you even get to uh tangentially connect to other lines in the grid through other lines in the grid it's like it's just it goes so deep it even makes me think about I think you reference community gardens in your essay it makes me think about um 
the communities within communities. It's like, if you have a bunch of gardens spread throughout a region, you know, and they're all in community with one another, sharing resources, doing mutual aid work, but then you go deeper into those individual communities. And then you see the, the uh, communities of ecologies, you see the tomatoes next to the basil because they fucking slap together. You start to see like, all of this companionship happening within the companionship. And so I think that's why I kind of like the grid was like, hello. And I was like, oh, hey, I see you. <laughs> and I love like in so many ways, you know, like probably the spider web became, came first before the idea of the grid or maybe the grid mm. in many ways because of the spider web. But, you know, the, like, how, how do we also take the kind of like, figuring out line forms not in its like rigidness of the spider form spider web form and kind of think of um the grid in a similar way like I think folks think of the grid and they think of like rigid but the grid turned on its angle scrunched mm. over my head is a spider web you, you know like totally. how, are, how are all these formations that were taught to be read or understood in a specific way like crumpled into the ball and then thrown through the window mm -hmm. um, and all these kind of like I don't know renaming giving yeah. new forms to um not only like our survival, but our, thr our, our, our thriving. I love, there's um, one of Margot Okazawa Ray, who is part of the founding uh, collective of uh, the Kombahi River Collective, um, introduced me to the word thrival, which I love. Mm -hmm. um, which like, you know, we talk about survival all the time, but we never talk about our thriving, our, our thrival, our thriving as a part of our survival. So um, all of these forms that kind of, that we make morph us and echo us so that we can live long, long lives. Yeah, yeah. I have a question for the both of you. So I think we kind of touched on like the form of the web and I want to get, I want to talk a little bit about like the textures of the web. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I've learned from you too that I'm really interested in is like this idea of the web being sticky and like staying sticky. And I'm curious, what is the stickiness? What is its purpose? What does it do for us? How does it hold us in the web? Mm -hmm. I don't know, for me, when I, <laughs> I'm like, join this thing in my mind where I'm like, Ayana, how, how erotic do you want to get right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes, always. Um, but like, when I think of stickiness, I think of sweetness, I think of delight, I think of pleasure, I think of, right, that Tony K. Bombard quote around like the revolution has to be irresistible, like it has to be whatever it is whatever portal it is that we're building, whatever we're asking people to um, collaborate with us on or like think alongside us with, it's like, okay, is it pleasurable? Is it delightful? Is it sticky? Is it joy inducing? Is it like, is it engaging our curiosity? Is it engaging our like somatic, like vibrate, like, you know, vibrational, like um, creative expression. Like it's like, it, it, for me, it's about um, it being a place where you don't want to leave. Mm. Or it, it's a feeling where you don't want to leave. You just want to kind of, you kind of want to sit in it a little, a little longer, and um, and keep digging and keep it, keep exploring and keep expanding. Um, mm -hmm. so that's what I think stickiness is. I love that. And it was inspired by like the stickiness of the web, right? The actual functional yeah. stickiness of the spider web um, that is about interdependence as well. Mm. Yeah, I think so much about catching mm -hmm. in, in response to stickiness. Like, you know, we, we release stickiness because we want to catch or we want to like bring close or we want more. Um, and how 
so much or like so much of the image of the web in my brain and how I how I move through the world is so much in the like basket or bag form like I think so much about um the web not really in its like or spider web form like I don't often think of it as as flat but I think of the like stickiness as like kind of like you said as like inviting in and catching like I want to like I want my web to like come and have y'all like sit on my lap like <laughs> yeah. um, how does the how does that kind of um yeah that that form of um attraction um mm -hmm. also act as a a tool for this continued work or for this more more like okay you got caught in this basket we're in this basket together like what comes next what do we dream of 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 next as the, as the next thing to exist mm -hmm. And how do we like tend to that basket too and like protect that basket? Like something, camera, I don't know if you wanted to add something because I have I have a question for y'all too. But I I if you if you wanted to add something, I wanted to give space for that too. I just wanted to add the this little thought, which was like, I feel like uh stickiness also inspires curiosity. Like Anytime I have something sticky on me, it's usually honey and I want to like smell it or lick it. And I'm like, mm, what's this? Like, I'm very curious about it. It like activates my senses. And um, I think everything both of you just said about stickiness kind of inspired that in me. I think there's also this something about like proximity to stickiness. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's a feeling that we're, you know, taught to like rub off the sticky Yeah. Uh, honey residue that's on the counter like don't leave it because then ants will come or then blah 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 like but how do we um kind of again like put new language to these things that are used as kind of like you know stay away or protectors but um these protectors that then kind of invite in yeah yeah mm -hmm. I think um, something I have been thinking about so much in general, but then like, especially related to, to y'all's work is like this, 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 uh, question of abstraction and protection and opacity. Um, and I've kind of been obsessing over abstraction being like a, a definitive, a definitively black technology, like period. Um, and <laughs> so it's, so it's like I've been I've been picking up Luke's the, the the watercolors um in, in in the in the newsprint and that were um that were shown in the slideshow um they were reminding me right of the, these these abstractions of entanglement and these abstractions of 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 the web um and how webs can act as like a protective textile right this kind of um this kind of barrier for for those who who we invite in to enter and those who we kind of you know mm -hmm. this for this for us like this this kind of um play with opacity and um camera i'm i'm also thinking about this when it comes to um your work with the activation residency i remember when i first came across it like all i saw were these beautiful images, right? I just saw all of this like delicious imagery and it kind of made me aware of, it was just a glimpse into all of the like generative and emergent, right? Stickiness and juiciness that happened over that course of time. But then I also was very aware that like, I get, I, we only get the images. Right, you the 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 what what actually is happening is for the people that are there, mm -hmm. and um, that reminds me of abstract abstraction in a way in which there's there's this like this there's this play with legibility, right? Um, and some of my favorite um, abstract artists in ab in abstract like the 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 artist collectives that are leveraging abstraction as a technology are the um, United Order of the Tents, right? The oldest um black women secret organization in the nation they started in the 1800s um and were secret for centuries right 
Um, and then even Sojourner Truth, who gave us the amazing quote, I sell the shadow to support the substance, right? There's this, again, technology of playing with abstraction. So I would love to um, hear from y'all, like how do y'all think about or maybe leverage the technology of abstraction in your practices, like this play with um, legibility and illegibility, right? Opacity and transparency, right? Because we want to keep it sticky. We want we we want to we want to find each other. We want to connect with each other, but we also know like um, we also know like Lucasa said, stickiness is frowned upon, right? We want to clean it up. <laughs> we never move it. So how do we how do we protect it and how do we tend to it at the same time? Yeah, I love this question so much. I like. Okay, so I feel like the reason why we're able to do what we're doing in the time that we're doing it is because dominant culture has no idea that we exist. It's like this sort of, you know, overarching um, egregore of dominant culture is just doing what it does. And here we are sort of in the shadows, you know, doing our thing and making moves and building new worlds. And it's just, it it's it feels like power to be able to, to use abstraction to make things happen, like sort of under the radar. Like I kind of feel like a detective sometimes, like I'm like, okay, I'm like under the radar, I'm doing my thing. Things are in forward motion, but I'm like protected by the distance between myself and the work that I'm doing and dominant culture. Um, and the piece that you said about activation is super real too, because um, you know, people will come to the residency and be like, there's literally nothing like this in the world. I feel so lucky to be here. Um, and then you see the images, like I see the visuals as sort of like that opening that you've talked about in your essay. It's like, we're here, we're ready for you. You know what I mean? But you're not, you're not really going to be able to experience the, the breath of the residency until you come or get an invitation. Um, and I think Lucasa can kind of speak more to like the specific artist experience of it. But yeah, I think everything you just named about abstraction as a technology, that's like my shit. I like just, I feel like I just started to um, play with language around it. And it's just so exciting. It makes me feel like, um, this sounds so cliche, but it just makes me feel like I can do anything. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just like, exactly. here we are, you know, and yeah, it doesn't need to be. I think when I wrote Care Manual, my work stopped being about resisting um, oppression and dominant cultures. And it started to be about like a world that dominant culture is never going to be able to see. Mm -hmm. And I love that so much with like thinking about like sharing of a residency or sharing of that space that was so like, I am one of those people that are like, oh yeah, this is like a space that I felt so lucky to have witnessed and um, been able to like relax and be myself in. Um, and, you know, may the, you know, like advertise, like their advertising does not even come close to what activation even needs or desires or wants. And those images, which were so beautifully kind of like scattered around so many folks' um, networks as these kind of like windows into maybe like a sliver of what happens there because you can't know what it's like to be there unless you're there because when you're there, you're meant to be there. And I think there's that, that's like the special thing too. It's like, no, we're not going to have like a video promo or you know what I mean? Like <laughs> of like what it's like to be at activation residency because it's not about rep representing that. It's about being there. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that kind of connection of, um, yeah, I don't know, that kind of like camouflage. I love the word camouflage of kind of activations relationship to the public's eye like may it be kind of confusing and may someone never understand until they're there because they're meant to be there um yeah I mean I think a lot about like understanding camouflage um 
transparency, translucence, um, abstraction as someone who whose main medium is storytelling um, and words and language um, as a medium that is so understood or you know like we think we understand all words and all letters um but what does it mean to make work with this kind of with the language or with materials that we all use in different ways in a way that is for specific folks to read mm -hmm. um I think a lot about that when I'm using the text form like Oh yeah, this story is going to be out of order and it's going to be tangled and when people walk by they might not even they might look at it and be like I can't make any of this I'm going to keep walking and that was meant to be for that person. Um, and the kind of like abstraction of like patterns and and drawings kind of side by side text forms as this kind of like added glitch to how we um like purposefully abstract something um to tell a different angle or a different part of the story um so yeah i love this yeah always always abstracting because when you live in the abstract or your life is um because and in a way that we don't want folks to understand or in a way that folks refuse to do the work to understand um then yeah how does that how does that abstract become this kind of like this webbed cloak that's yes based on all of us yes i also feel like the three of us are doing this really beautiful thing with language um i i i i do feel like decolonize has been overused but i really do feel like we're decolonizing english like when i read y'all's work i see myself i feel myself i feel seen in the words and um just thinking about like this the juxtaposition between like oral cultures and text-based cultures and how oral cultures came first and then text-based cultures came when we started to see um more like mass representation of uh, oppression so like what does it mean to sort of like reclaim words and still be able to like find each other find those webs like in 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 language um a language that has been used to obliterate uh folks like us and so it's just so cool to be able to like take certain technologies like maybe violent technologies and again like flip them on their head um and use them for what we want to use them for <laughs> Yeah, I know I'm I'm thinking about um for folks who don't know Ayana's work, Ayana puts out an incredible newsletter that comes to your email. Y'all should all subscribe and pay them all your money. Um number two, shout out Care Ecology. <laughs> all news uh, newsletters are the future, which is where I'm going. Um but <laughs> I yeah, I'm thinking about like the newsletter, the newspaper, which is the form that I decided for this publication to take place, like these kind of um, maybe like these forms that were created to share oppression or share stories of war or um, like how I wonder, Ayana, if you want to kind of tackle this question about this form, um, this kind of um, I don't know. I feel like you're a newsletter queen over there. So I'm like, you know, I how do how do we um yeah, how is this why is this now our form and why is the newsletter the the newspaper the cheap art now mm -hmm. our form for for communicating? Yeah, um okay, so it's so it's so funny you ask you're asking me this question cuz I was like literally going to ask you the same question. I like there's this um, quote, and you shared it in the beginning around um, we web keepers is connective tissue, baskets, net, hands that hold bodies that fight oppression, underground mycelium, seeds getting ready to sprout, ancestors we never got to meet, kinship so deep it reminds us of our multiplicity, chosen family, lovers, an ecosystem, a legacy of caring that holds us through our darkest days. And um, 
what I have been thinking about, so I have a clay practice and something that we use um, is this thing they call paper clay, which is essentially like um, a slosh of water and like paper pulp or tissue paper. A lot of people use tissue paper. And so, and the, the purpose of this paper clay is to repair a vessel or to strengthen a vessel so that it can survive the firing in the kiln. And um, I'm thinking about your, I just can't stop thinking about newspaper, right? As this connective tissue that helps us survive or even thrive through the firing, right? Um, and I think, I think maybe the newspaper or the newsletter right now is just like, it's like our bomb. It's our salve. Like it's the thing that's getting us through, you know, like we know there's a firing. We know there's like this process that we're collectively going through. Um, and I know for me, um, Camera's newsletter and some of the other newsletters I subscribe to and even like the connective tissue of this, this newspaper is like, okay, like as we're world building, these are the worlds right now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like these are the spaces, these are the sites of, of relief um, mm -hmm. and of, of, of breathing a little bit easier, something expanding just a little bit more, like Cameron was just talking about, about like just like um, using language to just to make a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more space into it, a little bit more space in it, and um, use it as sites of like interspecies belonging, right? Because, yeah. so, hello, because can we talk about how like the colonizing force of language is the reason we even like separated the human species from the rest of the fucking natural world, right? It's that it's the language as a technology of ta taxonomy and separation and separation and separation and separation for, you know, um, colonizing and capitalist uh, um, gain. Um, and to, 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 to take that back and say, no, 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 no. How do we actually, how do we actually engage language in ways that, um, inspire, um, interspecies belonging and, and invent new ways to be right multiplicitous then creates this opening, this portal, right. Um, that we can climb into. So I think maybe that's what the newsletter and the, and the newspaper and like these alternative forms of dissemination is doing for us. Mm -hmm. which are so like how we've always done it you know what I mean like right. I'm like oh yeah there's like all of a sudden now like everything that I get all my weekly like subscriptions are newsletters written by my friends and like beloved um that's where all my like extra money goes to or whatever um and and I think like you know that's how you know pamphlets and um, newsletters and underground papers in uh, that came in paper bags delivered to folks' doorsteps are like, yeah, they are these worlds. And I don't know, it's maybe this. Yeah, I, don't, I, I always think about printed, printed matter, printed media, but um, just kind of a, a a loop back moment, a beautiful moment to kind of see this like resurgence of the newsletter. That's so beautiful. I also feel like it's um, doing this thing of delegitimizing the social media space so we can actually like listen to each other more deeply. Um, also, you know what I mean? It's also reminding me, so I learned from this amazing uh, mythologist named Sophie Strand about the relationship between mushrooms and plants. And in the before times, um, plants were just like little, uh, planning to wrap up at 815, I think, but find it go a little over. Awesome. Um, plants were just like little green seed lobs. And then they came onto the land and then the mushrooms were like, oh, you know, out here in order to survive, you got to grow some roots, baby. So the mushrooms actually taught the plants how to grow roots. And for me, I think like that is what the newsletter culture is doing for me right now. Like anytime I open up my email and someone's newsletter pops in like I stop everything I'm doing and I go read it and I'm just like 
people's lived experiences are the medicine we need. Like, you know, this, this motif of like, we are the stories that we need. It's, it's just so deep. And then also thinking about, um, stories as ancestors, like myths were here before us. Like we came mm -hmm. into, into the world of myths. And, and I'm also loving like the, the intelligence of story, how they use us to, to do their work. It's just, it's mm -hmm. so deep and so beautiful. And, yeah, I think like in this moment, I'm feeling an overwhelming amount of gratitude for the both of you, because I feel like I, you make me brilliant. That's how I feel. Oh, can I like, can we like, <laughs> line? that hit me like I was like, I had a thought and everything washed away when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness how mm -hmm. true is that mm -hmm. mm. oh tears are coming tears <laughs> literally tears <laughs> oh my god yana just write it down because it's <laughs> this I is know. gonna be recorded you go back in I feel like yeah. we have been in our own little world it might be nice to like invite others in and see if they have like you know anything to share or offer or yeah, yeah. The, the q a box is open um if folks want to put questions or comments or thoughts or favorite words or favorite sticky memories yeah we didn't even we didn't even get to performance i was so interested um cameron to talk uh, talk performance with you. I keep, oh. I keep thinking about, um, you know, Ruth Wilson Gilmer's uh, quote, abolition is life in rehearsal, right? This rehearsal word, this practice, this performance of the world that we're trying to um, spin, spin into being, right? Um, but that's probably a whole nother, <laughs> a whole nother, <laughs> another two hours. hours. Uh, yes, exactly. Ah, uh, Shirley, I love Shirley so much. So mm -hmm. Shirley actually came to Activation last year as a writer, and we took a little field trip in the middle of the residency to go visit the land. Um, it was, y'all, it was so deep. We like rolled into the neighborhood, saw the first thing we saw was a black baby bear crossing <gasps> the street. We like stopped the car. We're like, oh my God. God, you know how baby animals like walk like they're still trying to figure out their yes. bodies like all gangly and cute it was it, uh it was everything thank you for being here Shirley mm. I think so much too like um you know, this, this like reunion or this like moment together as, as the work also, you know, like um, how I think all three of us are worker be folks who love to be busy. Um, and, you know, that is so much the work too. I love to be in that headspace. Um, and also making time for just like the nourishment of, of sharing together. Um, I've been thinking a lot about like, uh, I'm away in New Mexico at a fellowship and a grad student that I'm working with was asking me about my sketching process. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, huh. I think sending voice notes to my friends and receiving them back is like the sketching work that I'm doing right now and um, how so much of that work kind of like goes un unnamed, maybe for better and for worse, but um, about so much of this, like this gathering space that the three of us are in and however many folks are are joining us on Zoom tonight as this kind of like, Oh yeah, we're 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 practicing this. Right. We are like being each other's windows and each other's webs and each other's rivers and each other's stages and hands and um that 
just taking the time to be here. I'm like, this is what I needed. This is this is the expanding of the web because um yeah, fuck all the other stuff. This Absolutely. is what what gives us. Yeah, getting paid to expand the web with you guys is what I came to earth for. Period. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I love that. I think that I think that totally gets to, right? Like this 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 care caretaking um this caretaking practice as like this rehearsal practice um and making space for I think Lucasa like I'm forever 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 inspired by like how your practice so much of your practice is literally gathering us Mm -hmm. (laughs) like that like Oh my goodness, I was just in my studio the other day flipping through the African pottery book, the zine you gave me. And then, then there's the quote of, you know, during our last visit before you went off to um, New Mexico around like the, 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 like the classroom that is the everyday. Like I, in, in the, I think there's just so much in your practice that we can, um, that we can carry and 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 learn from um, when it comes to like the the, the performance mm-hmm. of of keeping the web and 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 tending to the web, right? Mm-hmm. So thank you for this Good question. Should I read it out loud? Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, Riza says, my question then is, linguistics is a treasured love of mine, specifically the evolution of linguistics through folklore and oratory histories of indigenous communities. These days, I find myself very curious about how memes and emojis are becoming their own abstractions of language, you know? Like a bitch can have a full convo through just emojis sometimes. So how would you encourage people to playfully develop their own and claws and claves of new language of shadowed language from the mainstream Ugh. this is such a good question that's a good one mm. I'm like, we're just going to keep on making our new forms, you know, (laughs) like this is, you know, we're, we're spending less time face to face. So we're going to like send each other upside down smiley faces Mm -hmm. more and figure out what that emoji really means. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, But I think so much of this is like how... Yeah, I'm like, may we teach our future generations about memes Mm -hmm. and may we also teach them about oral history and like may all these kind of like, um, I don't know, forms of communication be in this like soup offering that we then use. It's kind of what I'm thinking about. Um, Like, yeah, I'm I'm always curious and like, what are the forms of communication that like I don't understand that I like need to learn to understand or refuse to learn to understand um but what are these yeah what what are these new ways that we're going to keep on coming up with that will kind of like get us to the next point Mm. I think the thing that's coming up for me is how um just the power of when these alternative languages just start to become shared. Like if I I notice like one of my friends, instead of saying, how are you doing? She's always like, how you going? And just thinking about like how once they become shared, it's, it's like, um, um, it's like a way for us to love each other through the way that we talk to each other. It's like, I love you so much. I want to speak like you. (laughs) Mm-hmm. and that sometimes happens between best friends right like that yeah. often even the mm, I'm like I think I got that from Lucasa. <laughs> yes oh even just thinking about how language can be gestural like this right. entire time I'm like sitting here I'm right. snapping I'm like really here like I'm animated um 
and or even yeah, Sonic, that's, right? Woo! <laughs> Let's make some music. Come on, come on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think something that has been super inspiring for me, like, okay, you know, um, how would you encourage people to playfully develop their own enclaves of new language of shadow language from the mainstream, like, something that's been super exciting for me to think about is like, okay, um, I love to kind of nerd out on like, the technologies of colonialism sometimes because I'm like oh that's how you did that so <laughs> like something that I've been really researching a lot is okay Sylvia Winter talks about this Akia Aman Jackson talks about this in their book Becoming Human but it's like okay how has language um uh, specifically the, the the language of colonization how has that created these, like I said earlier, these like kind of very, very strict taxonomies of, of separation from the natural world, of um, like flattening of disciplines, right? Um, so something I love to play with is like, okay, how can our transdisciplinary practice invent new languages and ways of being, right? How, how, how does our overlapping and like expanding and muddying all of the, these separations of disciplines or mediums or ways of practicing then create new stories right so like something that I play with in my practice is like um I code but I also write and I also like have this like craft practice where I'm playing with clay so um I like experimented with creating this speculative fiction book that was like it's this series of algorithmically generated stories narrate like told from the like, told from the um the voice or or maybe like the what what data might hold of ancient bald cypress tree right so like it's a collapsing of these various disciplines in my practice and now we're like generating new stories from that from that muddiness and from that stickiness so I would say like, how do people play with language? Like play with your practice, right? Like start creating a gumbo, make your practice a fucking gumbo, right? And and let like compost everything, like let it be a tea that's just brewing mm -hmm. even. And it's gonna be scary. I know I'm like terrified all the time because I'm like, maybe this isn't like, maybe this isn't legible enough. But then you realize that illegibility, like Cameron was saying earlier, is the freedom right? Because you can do, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, and now, now you're in this wide open space. So, so yeah, find your wide open space. Yes, <laughs> and then absolutely. like bring others with you there. So y'all can all play and invent new languages. Everything in the soup, everything <laughs> in the soup, like feed it to others, let yes. it, feed, let it feed others and feed you at the same time. Mm. Yeah. Matter just wants to get together with matter, which is why what you just said about like transdisciplinary is so it is just it just is what it is. Like mm -hmm. I just feel like every medium um in and of itself is transdisciplinary. There's so many different things, so many different ways of being that we have to access in order to like relate to and and um be in conversation with that medium that nothing is ever singular like, that is like the worst myth that has ever been told yeah. and all of it's just not a good one um it's yeah. a profitable one it's a profitable <laughs> one <laughs> I love that well on the theme of matter here at printed matter matter <laughs> matter, matter matter matters always um that might be a great place to stop for tonight yeah. for now um although we said we could maybe the next zoom is like a 10 hour marathon where we're just like <laughs> going 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 um but so thank you thank you thank you the two of you for being here and adding to this soup and um for everyone who joined us uh, today and and so many great questions and comments are still in the Q and A. So thanks, folks, for putting new language um, in front of our eyes. Um, I'm not sure, Emmett, if you want to hop on or not, but um, 
we would love for all of you to, do you want to say it? Oh, I'm, just, I'm just going to put the link to the book in the chat mm. just in case anyone's interested. It's uh, through Printed Matters website. Um, thank you all so much for this conversation. How amazing and engaging. Thank you. Gift nourishment. Yes. Thank you for this connective tissue. Mm. Next time we're live streaming from New Mexico. <laughs> Oh, yes. I know. I'm like, yes, connective tissue. Buy this book, too. Yes, yes buy my book. Yes. Yeah. I was like, wait, how do I prepare? But I surround myself with stacks of this work. So, yeah, thank you all. Well, thank you.